Hi, I wanted to record a little video to show you how you can do debugging in Lucy. It's actually fairly easy, but it can confuse some people because of the administrator layout. So what I have here is a database query that is literally going to get a list of countries. Um, it's just a single table in the database and uh, with three columns, ID, country code, and the name of the country. Uh, nothing much there. Let's say I want to start debugging this bit of code. So what I can go is into the Lucy administrator, and on the left you can see debugging. If you click settings, you can say enable debugging, which is simple enough. If I clicked update, now in debugging is enabled. And if I reload this page, nothing happens. This might seem confusing at first, but what this is, is actually a feature in Lucy, which allows you to debug a page without showing the, the debug output. So if you go to debugging logs, you can see I've now called this page a few times, and here is the latest incarnation of the page. So if I now click on here, I have the default de debugging that shows you all the components that I've called uh, from there. The, uh, that's the whole application stack and template information. I can add more things to this. For example, I can uh, enable database activity. I can see how much of a query is being used. And basically, I can enable all the settings of exceptions, so you can see all the exceptions that are raised. Tracing, if you use the CF trace tag uh, to output to the log, you can put dump, and if you set the, the type of uh, output of the dump, uh, if you have any timers and implicit variable access. So if we now click update and rerun this page, in the admin, we should see a lot more information. So we now have um, implicit variable access, so country code and country name. Uh, you can see the queries that uh, only of this query, which is a very horrible query, obviously, select star from app countries is not what you'd normally do. Um, what you can actually do is actually then copy these things. Uh, if I go into my code, I can now see things like um, my query here, I can actually just put all the columns that I'm actually using and reload it. This, obviously, this is a very simple query, so you're not going to get a lot of columns, but it can tell you in a much more complex application. Uh, there we go. So there's no, no implicit variable access now, and there's no columns being used from there. And you can see uh, that, for example, country code and country name are being used in my loop. So if I go to my loop, you can see that I have country code and country name, uh, and it's implicit in the sense that I didn't explicitly say which which variable they come from. If I were to put um, results dot country name and country code, rerun rerun this, uh, I can now see in the logs that I, there's only one. Uh, implicit variable access and the CF query, which is how the tag of query execute actually the function make your pardon query execute actually runs. That's all very fine, but you go, but I want to see my debugging in the actual page. This is where the templates come in. So you can create a template per IP. So the idea you could have, for example, a comment that's actually being output to uh, certain URLs or certain IPs, or you can have a full um, output for my IP. So for example, I can say this is the developer's template. And for that, I can put a, a whole bunch of IPs uh, or ranges, and it tells you a whole whole definition of how you can uh, define them. I get what kind of um, output I want. In other words, if something executes for too long, uh, I want a highlight to happen. Uh, the, how you want stuff enabled. You can show scope variables, whether is, is it, um, if you're scoping your variables properly, and some more debug information. So we can just submit that. And now you get what you'd expect. So now you have the whole modern output, as it's called. You have the template. You have the execution time, uh, which is actually 4 milliseconds. It's kind of confusing when it's dot zero zero one. Um, which is pretty fast, and it tells you which files it actually went through. One implicit variable access, here's all the other information. The other information, the scope information, as it says, if I want to expand it, it says the scope will be displayed on the next request. 
So I can now reload the application scope and you can see what's in there. Same thing for the other scopes, it's empty. but uh, And that's it. Hopefully this will get you going a little bit better on, on debugging your applications.